What's up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine. Today we are taking a look at in-ear monitors on Geek Tech Talk Live with Jeffrey Powers. That's me. What's up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine, and today we're going to be taking a look at all of these in-ear monitors I have purchased. Purchased to find out what's the best in-ear monitor that you can you can get nowadays. So you can find me on the socials. There it goes right away. Uh, just think magazine putting the geek you got me. Now, is, this all started uh, about a week, a couple weeks ago. I was looking at some in-ear monitors. I, I got a few different versions of in-ear monitors, and I've always gone for the professional line, of course, because I'm a musician. I just retired these because I, I just got the Shure 535s, but this is my set of in-ear monitors that I've had for many, 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 many years. So this is my headset in-ear system. Now, you can plug this into anything from a mixing board to your computer to, uh, well, I would have this in an ear, ear monitor system. And being a drummer, I didn't need to have a wireless system. I just needed to have a system. So what I did was I plugged this into a single ch channel Behringer board, which would then uh, pull the uh, sound from the mix on the main board. And then I'd have in ears so I could play without having a monitor next to me. I could control my sound so it would, you know, I don't get tinnitus, which is the ringing in the ears. And you just don't want the ringing in the ears because it sounds just like this. And you don't want that. So <laughs> what I decided, what I ended up doing, uh, once I had this set up, once I could go in ears, I never looked back. And I think it's helped my, my hearing. Keep in mind that this is this is just a system that helps you in so many different ways. And with the drivers inside here, the the, uh, the speakers like, would then allow you to hear things uh, as crisp and clear as possible. Now, these in ears, I got these in 2002, 2003. These are called the E5s from Sure. They were about a hundred fifty dollars, if I remember correct, because you had you had five tiers of the in ears, uh, and uh, E5 was one fifty, and it went up to like five, six, seven hundred dollars. So I ended up using these and uh like i said i just got the 535s which are the newest shures so i decided to put these into retirement so these are actually what's going in the on the board so whenever i need to do an in-ear type situation teleconference or one-on-one -on -one interview these will be in my ears now i have a whole bevy of headphones that also claim to do the exact same thing they have the ability, these right here, these all have the ability to have that same type of sound or better, newer technology. Some of these even have electronics in there that do things that back in the day you would have big boxes that would do. And so now we're going to take a look at all of these and we're going to unbox them and check them out and see which ones are the best when it comes to in-ear monitors. I'm gonna unbox this. We're gonna look at each pair. Uh, just so you know, I did unbox one of them already because I wanted to see what I was getting into when I decided to do this. I have uh, certain music here, which I have on my uh, Apple Music uh, page, so you won't hear it. It's called the ultimate headphone test if you're very if you're interested in that Basically, this is what I'm gonna do to test it You won't hear this because it's just a lot of like for instance. This, this is one of the sounds. This is the burning utility It sounds like an old TV like snow from an old TV and there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of things that go, you know, like they're testing the low frequencies, the high frequencies, the mid frequencies, uh, binaural. So I'll hear something from left side, from something from the right side. First of all, I want to let you guys know, hey, everything is, all these products I purchased myself. There is no, uh, nobody's, no sponsors, no anything like that. This is all from my own pocket so uh, this is my own review uh if you want to find out more about geekazine's review go over to geekazine.com forward slash review and that's going to tell you all my policies and procedures and so with that said let's move on let's get into the first one right here this one is the uh, basin 
B Singer VC100. It is a dual driver system, so that means that there's two small speakers inside this headset that are running to send the sound. So one one's actually doing the high and the mids, and the other one's doing the bass. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so basically, this has a wraparound ear option. So the cord itself is about four feet. And I believe you can get both what's called a TRRS option. Uh, TRRS basically means at the end of the plug here, you have, in this case, two little white lines. A TRRS has three little white lines. The, uh, the idea is that's for uh, your phone. Uh, so you can do microphone and your headphones. A regular stereo headset is a TRS. Whereas a, something for your phone, whether it be your iPhone or your Samsung or whatever, is TRRS. Hopefully that makes sense there. You have 20 hertz to uh, 20 kilohertz in your range with 18 ohms and 93 decibels. So it gets up uh, nine, anything after 93 decibels and it'll probably start to distort and clip and all, all that good stuff. But if you have it around there, uh, they, they work really well. So I've already done all the tests on this. And putting it in the ear, let's, let's show you how to put it into the ear, first of all. The cord is, is a twist wrap. So it's got, it doesn't have any type of uh, covering over that. But, you know, it kind of looks like a chain link fence right here. So, <laughs> but this is about four feet from the, uh, from the plug all the way to the ear, p ear parts. And as you can see, they, they did put a little bit of uh, plastic around this, but this is conformable plastic. So they come up straight like that, and then you can bend them around your ears. So uh, eat, they're all detachable, so you can unplug it. And then if you need to change out this cord, you can easily. And then when you're ready, you plug it in. Most of these uh, in-ear systems that we have are all gonna be unpluggable. Uh, and repluggable with other cords. So I'll wrap it around my ear. This is the left. I had the going to the wrong ear. So I put this in my ear, and then I'll wrap it around my ear. So with it wrapping around my ear, it'll it'll stay in a lot better. Now it it can still fall out. These these things, you know, with the, with the rubber silicone tips or the foam tips, you know, eventually any type of headphone is going to work out of your ear. You have to push them in every now and then. But for just regular use, I was playing some piano on it. It went downstairs and I played the drums. They moved around really well. Now, doing the tests, uh, the frequency test, I could start hearing the frequencies at about 20 hertz, uh, low rumbling. I could hear up to about 15, 16 kilohertz, which a lot of you, you basically want to hear what's going on in the uh, the band or, or anything like that. So even even podcasting with the voices, you will hear these voices, whether it be male or female, uh, really well. The binaural test, I could hear the stuff on the left side, on the left side, on the right side, on the right side. Uh, they have what's called phase polarity, which basically if it's in phase, uh, the vocals will sound like they're coming straight from the middle, but if it's out of phase, it'll sound like they're coming from the ears. So think, t little tests like that. And then, of course, the burn-in test, which, like I said, sounds like an old-fashioned TV snow, an old CRT or something like that. So these are all the tests that, that work. And from what I heard, I had absolutely no problem with that. And getting up to the 93 decibels, it was, it was fine. I usually don't go past something like 85 I try to keep it low because I don't want tinnitus. I don't want to hurt my ears. If you push the volume up, you're definitely going to hurt your eardrums. It doesn't matter if it's a big speaker or, or small headphones. It will still hurt your ears. So 93 decibel, that's just fine for me on this. But if you desire more, this might not be the headphones that work for you. Now, the best part about these, the Basin uh, Singer's Voice, the, B, the BC100s, these are only $35, which means that you can get headphones for your whole band. The tips, uh, they come with extra tips and a couple different sizes, and I believe you can probably just find extra tips online with these fairly easy. It looks like the standard uh 
plug for these types of tips. So you could probably even find foam tips if you're not a big fan of the silicone rubber. This was the Basin B-Singer BC100 headphones. Next up is the AS triple driver system. Look, it's just a basically a white box and a little label that says made in China on the back. But these are triple driver uh, headphones, which means that it has a base and two, one, one to handle the high end, one to handle the mid end. It's a noise isolating inside there. It's got a tuning technology inside, multiple ear foam options, and an inline mic. This is a $20 Headset. So it might not be perfect for the music part of things, but if you're doing a podcast, if you are taking a phone call, uh, then this might be the one to do. We're not going to test the microphone. We're only going to test the headphone part of it as we go. But I wanted to have a good option for you that use uh, TRRS for your uh for your shows and things like that so all right so what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap it i just pulled the plastic off so we'll just pull the rest of it off and then we'll open her up now this has an interesting design to it so i'm kind of curious to see how that design is going to really work uh on the ears, how they're going to fit into the ears. And it doesn't look like they go over the ears. This is not opening that well. Let's just, there we go. Oh, there we go. And it's all going to pop right out. This is the triple driver. It's one of the first of the triple drivers. And here's the headphones. As you can see, they look a little different, but I think one of the drivers is right here. And uh, that goes on the edge of the ear, not inside the ear. As you know, that the rubber ends go into your ear, into the sound hole part of the ear. So, pull these out. There's not much to this. You basically have the headset, and then you have a series of tips. And there's two foam tips, but it seems that one of the foam tips... Oh, it fell out. It's right there. So these are the foam tips, and these are the rubber tips in different sizes as well. And then, of course, you have the headphones. Now, these do not detach at all. They're set up into the headset, and this is also a TRRS system. So this is meant for the phone over using it for music. But once again, a lot of times you could probably just plug this right in. There was only one headset that I had that couldn't do that. It would actually make a really loud noise if I tried to plug it into a regular uh, headphone jack. In the driver, once again, the, the drivers go, there's, there's a driver right here from my understanding. In fact, we have the page. As you can see, like I said, they, they look really interesting, but these look slightly different than what they're showing on the page here. And I'm thinking that they've got a covering over these yeah, they got a covering over these. You have the housing for the mids, highs, and the base housing, and then the deep base housing, which is what's not going to technically go inside of the ear. Uh, so the woofer is, uh, is, I think, is more vibrating your head than anything. These are the headphones. Let's let's put them in here really quick. Let's zoom in just a touch, and they'll go in like I think that's the right ear. No, it says left. I'm always doing it wrong. <laughs> so that's left and that's right. And as you can see, those rings are out. That's surprising. I thought that those rings, let's just make absolutely sure that's the right ear. This is my right ear. Maybe maybe it's upside down. Maybe, oh, okay. That fits in better. I was putting them in and the base module was out, but I, th I realized that it goes in like this. So the cord is on a weird spot, but... It then fits over the ear like this. Now, you have the microphone right here. So I don't know how well that's going to work. And, and, of course, it's also got the buttons right here. So I got this over the ear. So it's kind of an odd way to bring it into the ear. But as you can see, it fits pretty well. And uh, it doesn't seal off as much as the other ones did. but Because I can hear myself talk. A little more so there's gonna definitely probably be some bleed through let's bring in the bring up the the songs I can start hearing the sound at 14k but you know that could be my hearing as well so about 14k that's not too bad though the spectral flatness test is basically just going through the frequencies from low to high 
and it's got a pretty good spectral there. Let's do a dynamic range. Okay, the dynamic range is going. Let's do the ba bass shaker. The, the, the cool thing about the bass shaker, going to find out if you have any sound, any type of uh, rattling or anything like that. And with the bass shaker, it does a good job, but it's not as high end that I want it to be that feel and actually it should make my head feel like that next thing is the driver matching so what this tests is if the left ear and the right here if you hear it in the center it's great but if it starts to waver to from one side to the other side then there, there could be issues now we're looking the left and right that that was interesting this it said left from my right ear and right from my left ear so i think this is mismatched <laughs> so stereo polarity polarity sounds good and so polarity is just fine right here um binaural so i'm hearing the left ear in my right ear and the right ear in my left ear and then the burn in burn in sounds pretty good now overall the design is is we interesting uh but in this set of headphones unfortunately what happened was it i heard the left side on the right side and the right side on the left side so uh there was something at you know, the mismatch in the cables so it's not really something i would recommend although a lot of people have used these and really enjoyed them uh the sound itself is pretty decent so uh this is a decent set of headphones at the price uh which was about twenty dollars uh, a little bit under twenty dollars, depending on which one, uh, where you get these from. Uh, you can you can definitely can't go wrong with them, but if you get mixed up on the whole left and right, then you might want to move on and check out the next one. So what is the next one right here? Here we go. We've got the KZZSR triple driver. This is a ten millimeter base driver. It has a detachable cable. It runs from ten hertz to forty kilohertz. 22 ohms and 107 dB. So it's a little bit louder in the ear and it's got the TRS and TRRS cable options. So you can get it for your phone or you can get it for your music. Let's unbox it. So we're going to go pull this apart. It slides up. So it slides up like this. And I got them in green. I like green. So you have uh, green and black options, which is uh, pretty cool. And uh, they come out, this is the right way. Uh, so there's the logo on the KZ earphone. You got a little uh, plastic tab to bring this up. This is basically how the, the uh, basin ones opened up as well. So that's pretty cool. So this is the headphones right here. They have a little bit different design as well. Let's just pull them out this way. We have, this is the cable, which, like I said, I didn't get the TRRS cable. I got the TRS cable. And then a series of rubber headphones. And then in here we have some, the user guide. And that, so just set that off to the side. We'll uh, get the cable. Usually the, the foams that are on the headphones fit really well in my ear. So I don't have to worry about that too much. But if you have smaller ears or bigger ears you might want to uh, check out the different sizes. Now, the cables, uh, the cable is exactly like the basin ones. They have this little twist to it, and you can feel that twist. And then, of course, the rubber, the ends that can twist around your ear. So it's meant to go around your ear. And bring this up. So looks pretty sturdy construction. Looks about the same length as the uh, basin. So I'd say about four feet in length. A little bit. Difficult to pull out, but they came out. There we go. And there's the earbuds right there. Make sure we're going left to left and right to right. I think that's going to be a big factor right there with these types of cables. The, uh, the other ones, it wasn't a detachable cable. So you can't, you can't determine the left from the right. So, all right. So let's uh, put these in. Now, this has a little bit different plug model. These have two pins in here. And so you want to match up the pins the right way. And my understanding is this is the right way right here. Oh yeah, they fit, they fit really nice. 
Uh, it took out a lot of external sound and uh, really, really happy with how this sounds. Now let's go to the page here really quick. So these are these are the headphones, like I said, triple driver, uh, crossover network, uh, detachable cable, and an ergonomic fit, and a one-year warranty, so that's not too bad. And like I said, they fit in just fine, and I could hear it. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of shake, and once again, on the initial shake, uh, that's it's it's okay. But, you know, once you start to sweat, the sweat really does make these uh, earbuds start to slip around, and, and they will pull, they could pull out as we go but i don't know for certain until i actually do a real uh test uh using them in a live situation so all right let's let's do the sound tests here really quick we're going to start with the lowest frequency oh uh, and i could hear it before it even hit 20. so it's definitely got that low end i think it was what it was 10 hertz all the way up to 40 kilohertz no, I'm not. I can't tell it's 40 kilohertz. That's way beyond anybody's uh, sound range. Wow, at about 19k, I can actually hear these headphones. In 15k, it's it's definitely coming in. All right, let's test the spectral flatness. And so far, I haven't heard anything bad, any any popping or scratchy sounds or anything like that. We'll do the bass shaker. Oh yeah. Now the bass shaker, like I said, you should feel like you know. It's shaking, and uh, this definitely is doing that, just like with the basins. Amazing. This has definitely got some good sound to it. Let's do left, right. Left channel. Right channel. The polarity is in the middle. Mismatched. So now we don't hear them outside. Amazing. Let's do a binaural test. So it's like somebody's knocking like right here, and somebody's knocking here. That's the binaural test. And now we're on the burn-in utility, and I'm hearing... It's it's loud and annoying, so I don't want to, and I don't want to get it up to 107 dB, because once again that'll hurt my ears. But for the amount that I'm I'm listening for for music wise, this is just it's amazing. It's definitely sealing around my ears. I'm definitely uh, getting the sound that I want to get, and that's 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 pretty cool. So this one was a pretty good success, and for twenty nine dollars, these are. Really, really, really good ones. I'm I'm glad I got these. All right, that just leaves one more. And I'm really excited about this because the CCA says this is five drivers in here. And you're going, well, how you do five drivers? Let me show you how that works. They have it set so you can see uh, that there is the main, the base driver, which is once again, a 10 millimeter diameter uh, uh, double magnetic circuit dynamic unit. And then they have these mid and high frequency units paired together, two towards the output area and two right behind there. And then they have what's called a PCB frequency dividing board in there. So you have your high frequency towards what's going to go into the ear and then the, uh, like a mid, uh, high and mid frequency a little bit farther back. And then the third one, which has the uh, has the base right there, which is going to be more into the ear, like like right about here in the ear. So let's take this and let's open it up here and see how these will sound. Slides out just like the other two did. There's the CCA. The silver. So that's not too bad. And once again, opens up just like the basins and the KZs did. These are smaller than the other two, which is interesting. And then it's like they pop out. Maybe there's a cover on this or something. Might be easier to pop out from the back. Nope, from the front. So push them up. And looks like I got these in purple with a silver faceplate. And then once again, your cables here, and then we have some extra uh, extra ear plugs, and then instruction, user manual, and all that. So, all right, there we go. We're gonna unplug it. And once again, we do have the double prong uh, plugs here, so you got to watch out when you when you plug it into your headset, so you don't uh, bend those pins. It looks to be just a, I believe, a touch shorter than the other one. Let's. Let's take this one. This is the, the basin one. So, yeah, as you can see, these are a little bit shorter in length than the uh, basin. So, not a big deal, but uh, if, you're, if you're going from headphone to board, you might need a, uh, 
You might need an extender of some sort. Trying to figure out the right and the left. Now the other one actually said right and left. This is red and blue. And I'm not exactly sure what they're indicating red and blue with. So this is, uh, like I said, this is also a 10 millimeter double magnetic circuit. Four mid-high units and electronic crossover. Now that's interesting because a crossover, once again, uh, used to be like a box that you would shove into a rack and use it uh, to uh, cross over your highs and lows. And for a, a sound engineer, a crossover is something that they use a lot to align those speakers. They're big speakers. But this, and I'm assuming because of the fact that a couple of these drivers are towards the tip, some of them are in the back, and the bass is in the back, this electronic crossover try to put some together so they sound like they're they're pretty close to together so i believe blue is always left but i could be wrong we'll go in here i'm gonna put them put this in i'm just gonna plug this in and do the left and right test really quick just to make absolutely sure that the blue is the left oh i was right I, this is the left all right so let's put the the right ear in so here we are uh as you can see it fits over the ear pretty well um, it doesn't seal. I got to push it in to get that seal sound that I got with the, uh, KZs. Uh, but, uh, it, once I, once I pushed it in, I could hear, I can definitely hear. It fits in the ear pretty well and it fits over the ear. So a little bit of shake. It doesn't feel like it's going to pop out or anything like that. Let's go to the frequencies. And once again, the frequencies on this one, seven Hertz to 40 kilohertz and the human hearing goes up to about 14, 15. And if you're lucky to get past 22 kilohertz, it's great, but it says that it can go to 40. We're only gonna go from 16 on the range. So let's go, let's start with the low frequency, 10 hertz. Oh yeah, I can definitely hear that before 10. And that's, that's pretty amazing. High frequency, I can hear, about 21K, I can start to hear it. And this is amazing because on the last one, about 19 kilohertz, I could hear the sound, and then it disappeared, and then around 16, it came back. This was pretty solid to go about 21 kilohertz, I could start hearing it, and then as it came down, I can continue to hear it. Let's do the bass shaker. Yeah, I can feel that rumble in my ears. So very, very good there. We'll do the left to right test. Left channel, right channel. Pretty straightforward. Polarity, we're in the middle. Twisted recording, that's amazing. Some binaro, could hear it back there. I can hear the knocking up front. And now the burn-in test. Oh, oh, okay, I gotta stop that. <laughs> oh, that was pretty hard. But so far, you know, from what I heard, this is pretty decent. I don't know, I, I don't know if, I mean, besides the fact that the 19 kilohertz to 16 kilohertz range, I could actually hear it go down. Whereas the KZs, I didn't hear it. I don't know if that makes much of a difference uh, unless you really have to listen for sounds that comes from there. So, But basically, the, uh, on the first test, these headphones, they, they work really well. I'm really impressed with how this sounds. This is the CCA C10s. Uh, and uh, just amazing stuff. So let's let's put these all in a row. And of course, it was it's no surprise uh, that the the first one I was a little bit skeptic on it to begin with. So from lowest to highest, the AS these are the ones that I don't recommend. Uh, they're about uh, twenty dollars, so they're they're the cheapest of the the bunch, and they don't have detachable headphones. And it's a TRRS system, so it might be better for your phone than it is for the uh, for anything else, but uh, not too bad for the price. It does do the job, you can hear things, but uh, I it really didn't work for me. The next ones that I like, these are the dual drivers from Basin BASN, the B-Singer BC100s. Uh, they had a great sound to it. They could hear the frequencies. I believe their frequency range, uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So around the 16 kilohertz range, you could definitely hear it. And you definitely heard it at 20 hertz there. And it, it's a pretty decent uh, set of headphones. And those are about $35. Next up, we have these right here, 
which are the uh, KZZSR triple drivers. They had a range of 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz at 22 ohms. And uh, from what I heard on this, I was really, really impressed with the sound uh, and uh, definitely would use these in a professional in-ear type situation. I loved how they just sealed in my ears because they just they just went in the ears they sealed in and it was it was amazing uh, how quick that i could notice that so and then of course the five drivers i'm really going to have to test these a little bit more than just the first impressions but these the ccas these are the cca c10 earphones for 40 dollars. the most expensive of the three but if there's five drivers in there i definitely want to test this a little bit more and see how uh, using these in a more professional environment is gonna go and they they do a good job going in the ear you can like i said when i got to 19 kilohertz i could actually hear the sound which i didn't think i would hear 19 kilohertz you can definitely hear it and as it's going down and it starts to become really prominent around 16 kilohertz and goes down and down uh, and then of course under 10 hertz i started hearing that bass right away and that's that's pretty impressive there so those are the four that I tested and checked out here. And we'll go through the four once again on the page here. This is the Basin BC100 in-ear monitor headphones. And then we had this one right here, which is the AS triple driver uh, earphones for about 1979 we got here. But of course, prices can change as we go. Then you have the triple driver in-ear from uh, KZZ. Uh, ZSR. They have the, the coolest design out of all of them. That's for sure. And you can get them for, with a TRS or a TRRS uh, plug there. And then, of course, five the CCAC 10s with five drivers in there. That was pretty impressive. I definitely, if you're really a big audiophile and you can hear that stuff, then I highly recommend to give this a try and let me know what you think because your hearing is different than my hearing. And for $40, it's not too bad. You can definitely get those as to test out and check out. And a lot of them have warranties on them. Like the, I know that the these right here, the, the Kaysons, they, they have a one-year warranty to them. And, uh, and I believe these have a one-year warranty as well. Yes, one-year protection time warranty. So 12 months protection. Uh, from the date of the purchase, so if there's any problems, you can d definitely uh, talk to the company and get these replaced. And of course, the cables do bend and break, so you can replace the cables on both of these options, all three of these options that I really liked, and, uh, and go from there. So you have some great options. I'm going to be testing these tonight when I play with a couple bands, and then I'll get you some further information uh, over on my website, of course. And then uh, we'll go from there. So basically, that's it. That's the, that's the, the, the gamut right there of in-ear headphones. There's other brands out there. There's other types of in-ear headphones out there. You can definitely go with a consumer brand like Sure. I have the 535s, and they, they, they work just as well as all of these right here. But what do you think? What do you like? Let me know by tweeting me uh, and letting me know over on all the socials there, which is not up. Let's do that again. Let me know by uh, t uh, tweeting me, by contacting me through any of the socials. You can also get me at geekazine at gmail.com. Think Magazine, put in a geek, and you got me. Uh, and, of course, you can ask questions on my page as well, and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. So that's pretty much it. I want to thank you guys for coming over here to the live stream. And uh, until next time, you guys geek out.